fitting a new crankshaft to a Stuart S50 steam engine. The first of the four S50s that I looked at had a crankshaft that was not in good condition. It was worn and had holes drilled in it to locate the position of the flywheel and eccentric sheave. This made the setting of the valve timing impossible. Every time I tightened the small grub screw on the eccentric sheave into the right position, it slipped back down into the hole, and the timing was in the wrong position. Luckily, whilst I was sorting out the parts that arrived from the USA, I found a crankshaft for an S50. All it really needed was a bit of sanding and refinishing. This new crankweb is in the shape of a sort of triangle instead of a round disc, so I'll be able to withdraw it and refit it to the engine without separating it from the main crankshaft. In this clip I'm just testing to make sure that the crosshead is free all the way along. And out of all the four S50 steam engines that I've been working on, this was the only one where the crosshead spaces were the right length. Now I need to remove the crank web from the crankshaft. Thankfully I didn't lock tight it in place. All I needed to do was temporarily refit the flywheel so I had something to get hold of to allow me to manually unscrew the crank web. To my surprise, the crank web parted company from the crankshaft very easily. You will notice that this is a left hand thread. In no time at all, I dismantled the unit. And when I fitted the new crankshaft, I was very pleased to see that it was a really good fit in the bearings. The only thing wrong with it was the finish on the face of the crank web. This was soon remedied by fitting it into the chuck of my Myford lathe and using some emery cloth. Here's a caution. Always fold over the emery cloth several times. Then you won't cut your finger on the part in the chuck if it grabs the emery cloth whilst it's spinning round. This is what the crank web looked like after using 100 grit. In this clip I'm using a finer grade of emery cloth, I think it's 138. And this more or less completes the cleaning of the crank web. I'm going to finish it off though using some 400 grade wet and dry sandpaper. This is what the crank web looks like after the wet and dry sandpaper. The part now has a very acceptable finish. All I have to do now is put the engine back together, set the timing and that's it. Although this week things have gone generally wrong with mechanical things in my life. The DAB radio module on my car has malfunctioned and that causes a lot of things on the car to also stop working. So I really wasn't surprised when I ran into a bit of a snag. The throw of the crank pin on the crank web is slightly more than it was on the previous crank web. With the crank web in this position, the crosshead is colliding with the spacers. While I think about a suitable solution, I'll do something simple. This can't go wrong. I'm fitting an Allen head grub screw in place of the bolt to secure the flywheel to the crankshaft. I remove the crosshead guide bars altogether. I've roughly set the timing and when I admit some compressed air to the engine, it runs quite well. It's okay running like this, but under load, it definitely needs the crosshead guides fitting. I could make some thinner spacers, but this was quick and very simple. I just ground flats on two of the spacers and the job was fixed. Here's the old crankshaft with two drillings in it, one for the flywheel and this one which is in the wrong place for the eccentric sheave. When I reassembled the engine and connected the compressed air line, everything worked fine. But as per usual, it's not 100%. It's in my nature to be quite obsessive when it comes to doing things like this. I like things to be right. The air admission, irrespective of the position of the crankshaft, was not the same at both ends, so I adjusted the position of the valve in the valve chest. A simple job, just remove the eccentric rod, rotate the valve spindle one revolution at a time until the admission at both ends of the stroke was identical. Almost immediately the engine sounds a lot better, but I haven't finished yet. To get the valve timing to what I would term perfection relative to the standard of the engineering of the model, it can take some time. It's definitely starting to run a little better. By admitting a small amount of air and rotating the crankshaft, I can see and hear where the setting needs to be. At the moment the setting is very close, but not close enough. Now the setting is a bit more like it. You can tell by the way the engine runs and the sound of it that it's a lot better. This is not difficult, you just need to practice and get used to how much to move the eccentric sheave for whatever sound the engine's making. 
Early admission of the steam or air is very desirable. Here I'm advancing the timing. This setting would possibly be the one I would use if the engine was bigger and had a heavier flywheel. When I take the timing too far forward, The engine starts to run quite lumpily, but once again if it had a big heavy flywheel, the flywheel would smooth this out. This setting is quite close, but there's something I need to do first that I forgot. There are only two bolts holding the cylinder in place, and there are supposed to be three. I looked in my box of 7BA bolts, but I didn't have any that were this length. So I modified a Stuart model stud, by threading it a bit longer. Once I fitted this stud in place, the cylinder was held very firmly. One final tweak and that is it. This is about as far as I want to take this engine, it's running very well indeed. There's a bit of play on the valve spindle gland, but that's not a big issue. The engine is at one with the universe, equilibrium has been restored and it's now running in complete harmony with itself. The beats are very even at both ends. And that's it from me in this video. Please stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.